Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Jacqueline and this is Low Carb Lish, the channel where we make low carb versions of our favorite high carb foods, trying to control our blood sugars and reverse type 2 diabetes. Today we are going to be making magic cookies. Now this is one of the easiest cookie recipes that I've ever found. This is not my recipe and I searched online to try to find out who the original creator of this recipe was and I couldn't. There's so many people that have made this recipe that I could not find um, the original person. So if you happen to know who that is, if you would let me know either in the comments or email me, I would really appreciate it because I will definitely give them credit for the recipe. Um, I did tweak this recipe just a little bit and I'll tell you um, why. The original recipe that I found called for um, four tablespoons of coconut oil and four tablespoons of butter. And what I found when I made this recipe is it was way too much fat because what was happening is the cookies cook and they bake and they're delicious and then a lot of excess fat came out of them and it's just sitting on the pan after the recipe cooked. So I cut the amounts of fat and oil in half and that has been working for me beautifully. And I'll show you all of that, you know, as we go along. So this cookie recipe is super easy to remember and it's super easy to put together. It's one cup of unsweetened coconut flakes. It is one cup of Lily's um, dark chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate baking chips. One cup of I have um, pecans and walnuts in here, about a half a cup of each chopped up. You can totally do all pecans or all walnuts, whatever trips your trigger. I just like to mix them, so that's what I do. Um, and if you um, change the nut uh, profile, just make sure that your macros with your carbs are still in the same vicinity. Um, this is four egg yolks and you can save the egg whites to use in soup or bet, uh, keto bread, whatever you like, but you're just going to need the yolks for this recipe. And then it's one teaspoon of vanilla extract, um, two teaspoons of coconut oil, two t or excuse me, two tablespoons of coconut oil, two tablespoons of butter, and five tablespoons of granulated monk fruit. And I'm using the monk fruit in the raw it's just erythritol and monk fruit and y'all these cookies are so good you're not going to believe it so it's so easy to put them together i'm just going to get started here and do it all you do and you're only going to need one bowl you just put the coconut the chocolate chips your pecan walnut mix or whatever nuts you're using and then um, you're going to add in your four egg yolks and i'm going to scrape them in because y'all know how i feel about that I'm going to get all that goodness in there and make sure that we're getting as close as we can to the correct macros. And then you're going to add your vanilla. And then I put my monk fruit in next and I'll show y'all why in just a minute. And you're just going to stir all this up and um, just, you know, make sure that the yolks are mixed up with everything else and that you've got your egg yolk all through the batter. And it just comes together really fast. And then you can see here, you just want to make sure everything's incorporated well. And your coconut oil and your butter are going to be a room temperature. And so I add them last because I want to make sure that I'm getting both of those incorporated well too. And so I want to make sure that my yolks are all through the recipe. And if you want to um, just kind of watch what I'm doing here, I'm just mashing the coconut oil and the butter throughout the batter. And this is honestly the part that takes the longest in this whole recipe. And it doesn't take that long, you guys. But you see how I'm just kind of pushing the butter and the coconut oil around because you want it all mixed in well and incorporated well. And you don't want any little pockets. Like see this little pocket of coconut oil? We don't want that because you want the oil and the butter to be mixed completely in with your batter. And so if you have to go in and kind of stab at it a little bit, that's fine too. Um, don't melt your coconut oil because it um, doesn't incorporate as well in the batter. I don't know why. 
but it doesn't. So just use it at room temperature and keep stirring. And like I say, when you find a little pocket of butter or a little pocket of um, coconut oil, like you see here, you just keep stirring and pushing it around until you don't see any of those anymore. And like I say, this is the part of the recipe that takes the most time and it doesn't really take that long at all. And when, once you get it all incorporated into your batter, you're not going to have the um, fat run off that you would have if you were using the original recipe that called for double the fat. And, and I'll tell you this, it didn't affect the flavor of the cookies that I made the first few times around. It's just that there's no sense in putting all that extra fat in there if it's just going to melt out and be laying on your baking sheet when your cookies are done. So doing it this way and um, taking some of the fat out, they stay together and you don't have nearly the mess to clean up. And you don't have the waste either because you're not wasting that coconut oil and that butter that's just going to leach out. So that's just my tip for the day, y'all. Okay. So this is it. And I, will, I did want to show you all this, that the batter um, is, it doesn't look like a cookie batter because we don't have any flowers or anything in here. But it is going to come together and it's going to stick together. And y'all, I'm telling you, these cookies are fabulous. They are really, really good. Um, I serve these just almost every time I have a dinner party or if I've got friends just coming over to have a casual dinner. I almost always make these because all my friends love them, even people that are not doing low carb. So it's a really good cookie. And I think you guys are really going to like it. And I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. But it's a really good cookie. So this is it. It's mixed up and ready to go. So I'm going to move my stuff here and get the cookie sheet over here and show you how I scoop them up and we'll bake them. Um, I've got my oven preheating at 350. And don't worry, I'm going to put the recipe with everything down and the macros and all of that. But um, I'll be back in just a minute and we'll scoop them up and get them in the pan and get them in the oven. And I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. So we're getting ready to scoop these cookies onto the cookie sheet. I'm using a Silpat mat. Um, it's just an inexpensive silicone set that I got. Um, came with the pan and the mat and a drying rack. And I'll leave that down, uh, a link to that. It came from Amazon. I've got two of them. And I'll leave you all that link if you're interested in that. And I'll also leave you the link for the scoop because the scoop is magical to me. Um, the way it controls portions and everything. But um, Anyway, you can do it on a sheet with parchment paper and a tablespoon, whatever is good for you. So anyway, I'm going to start scooping these. And these cookies are going to spread out a little bit, but not too much. But we are going to go in and kind of shape them up a little bit. Because um, I like them to look like a cookie and they, and they come out of the scoop. Not exactly like a cookie, just because of the way the batter is. But I'm telling y'all they're going to come together and they're going to be awesome. So, I'm shooting for this recipe Make will make 24 to 27 cookies, and I'm shooting for 24, but every once in a while I get 27 out of it. It's kind of weird, but um, anyway, I'm shooting for 24 today. So, you'll see um, when I get these on the baking sheet here what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and shape them up a little bit. But you guys, these cookies are so awesome. And like I say, I wish I could take credit for this recipe because it is the bomb. But I don't, I'm, this is not my recipe and I do not know who the original creator is. But whoever you are out there that created this recipe, thank you. Alright, so I can fit 12 on each one of my pans here. So, and you see they scoop up really fast too. I'm just making up the bottom of the scoop flat. I'm going to set this off to the side here and get my little paper towel. Alright, so I just like to go in and push them down and shape them up a little bit. And um, if you have got an aversion to cook it, touching your dough, you can do it with a fork. I just find it easier to use clean hands and use my hands to do it. It's faster and I have more control over it. And you're really just kind of, you know, shaping them up like a cookie. Trying to get everything to stick together, which is not hard because there's a lot of sticky stuff in the batter. 
and your chocolate chips are going to melt up really nice and the nuts and everything are going to combine with the monk fruit and this is really really going to be good like i say these these cookies i don't know who came up with them but man oh man they were a genius and they are i think they're i'll have to look to be absolutely positive but i think they're under a carb per cookie and um they're Depending whether or not I get 24 or 27, they're like 91 calories up to like 111, 112, something like that. But I'll put the macros down below as 24 because that's generally what I get out of this recipe. And then we'll just go with that. So let me put these in the oven. I'm going to make the other pan um, and I'll put them in the oven too. And when I come back, we'll take them out of the oven and let them sit for a little while, get them on the cooling rack, and before you know it, we'll be having some coffee with some cookies. Okay guys, so I've taken the first batch of cookies out of the oven about five minutes ago, and my pan's cooled down just almost enough for me to touch the pan, and you can um, see how these are supposed to look when they come out of the oven, and um, they're brown and beautiful on the edges, and um, these cookies, I take them off and put them on a cooling rack and leave them sitting mm, probably for about 30 to 40 minutes um, because the longer they cool off, the crispier and crunchier they get. And so I'm gonna have to come over there and corral that cookie in just a minute. Um, but they, they are so delicious. Like I said, I wish I could take credit for this recipe because it's amazing, um, but I can't. But I can tell you how to make them and maybe make your day better. And so, that last one over here. All right, y'all. So, I'm going to let these cookies cool. And I think I've got about five more minutes to go um, on the other batch. And I did get 24 out of the batch this time. So, um, that is what I'm going to go with on this recipe. And the next time I get 27, I'm going to divide this stuff up. So, I've got 24. Um, because two cookies makes a really nice serving with coffee or whatever, or for dessert or whatever you want to have them for. So anyway, I'm going to let these cool. I'm going to wait and pull the other ones out of the oven, and then when everything's cooled off and we're ready to go, then we'll be eating cookies and having some coffee. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, everybody, so the cookies came out of the oven. They look fabulous, and they're going to taste fabulous. Um, I think I did tell you that I've ended up with 24 cookies. So that means that the macros on these cookies, it's 102 calories per cookie and 0 0.90 carbs, so it's less than one carb per cookie. So I usually have two as a serving, but of course that's up to you. You just gotta count your own macros and decide you know, what's up to you. Madison's busy, or Macy's busy having a peanut butter cookie, peanut butter puppy cookie, because um, she can't have the chocolate that's in these. But anyway, they are really delicious, and I hope you enjoy them. I'm gonna have a little bite now. Mm. You guys, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> These are delicious, y'all, and they're really a good choice for um, having dessert, or if you're gonna have a meal that's very, very light at night. Because I do that once in a while, I'll have a um, sweet something for my evening meal. And I say evening meal, but I, I eat my last meal, generally speaking, no later than five or six o'clock at night. So I hope that you enjoy this recipe. I hope that you'll try them. They're really good. And like I say, I wish I could claim credit for these, but I can't, but they really, really are good. So I hope you will enjoy them. Um, also, if you would do me a favor and hit that like button, it really does help the um, YouTube algorithm when people have just been diagnosed and they're looking for low-carb, diabetic-friendly foods. It really does help them find my channel so they can get the help they need. Also, if you'll hit subscribe, um, you'll never miss another recipe that I make, and hopefully you'll find some yummy things that make your day, too. So um, thank you so much for coming in and baking with me today. I hope you had a good time, and I hope that you'll try this recipe. And you guys take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.